Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. We have our guest with us who is a lawyer and political analyst, Mr. Evans Ufedi, and he'll be here to give us an analysis of the gubernatorial elections in 2019. Good to have you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Welcome. Much. Thank you. So we recorded a, a large level of voter apathy in the, in the whole of the country. Lots of people saying that you know, there are several reasons for this because they were disappointed maybe from the presidential elections. But before we go into why we experienced a low turnout of voters at polls, what would you say were your expectations for the gubernatorial elections? Did you think that more people were going to come out or did you expect that what we saw was going to be what we had? Well, I, I expected that more people would come out as against the presidential election, but mm -hmm. it, it, it went the other way around. Because, you know, the gubernatorial election is like uh, the regional own thing. You know, the states, they have a greater stake at their states as against the, the center, which is very far. But apart from the fact that you have voters a party, which uh, is regrettable, we also have uh, had the uh, INEC party. And that contributed really to most of the problems we have because there are places where INEC did not show up in Lagos State until 12 o'clock. Mm. And people arrived those places, could not see the INEC officials, and they went back home. And those are part of the record of the party, the voters a party we're talking about. So like I said before now, that Nigerians are ready to change the narrative, but the question is, are our institutions ready, INEC as an institution, is it INEC ready really to, you know, make this change happen? Do you really blame the INEC officials for experiencing INEC apathy as well? Because we saw that at the last elections, we had an INEC official that lost her life. Yes. You know, there was, so they are fundamentally human beings and Nigerian citizens and deserve to be protected and catered to as well. Do you really blame them for experiencing them, experiencing apathy? And do you blame the voters as well? Well, I will blame the, the entire security architecture of the country. Mm. Because during voting and electioneering like this, we should have a proper strategy on security. And that was missing. We, have, we had no proper strategy on security. Even the policemen you have at the polling units were not, were helpless. I mean, the, the way and manner they went about the logistics and the structure of elections and all that was really poor. The sensitive materials, the way they were conveyed was poor. I mean, we, we have templates all over the world where we should have before now copied from civilized jurisdiction and then adopt same put it on pilot scheme, and then adopt him, and they have a smooth running process. I don't see any reason why we should be running into all this. It's really an embarrassment uh, to the country. We have so many states, uh, election results uh, declared uh, non-conclusive as we speak. And then you have uh, problems. River State is completely at war, okay? Mm -hmm. Some states, you have crises here and there, which are actually unnecessary. And, and we, 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 I envisage this that the governorship election will be, uh, will be tighter because the governors weigh a lot of influence in their respective states. And then these are governors that are not necessarily interested in uh, the larger good of the entire society as opposed to their own personal interests. Uh, because we, we, from their attitude and disposition, maybe not all, but some of them, Okay, it's just about getting reelected or getting elected. You understand? And that in itself, uh, they, they, they throw caution to the wind. So they employ every kind of, um, you know, every kind of strategy to make sure that the system is destabilized. They unseat the security architecture and then make sure that the people who are left or the people who have been employed to make their bidding happen are on ground to do the same. And these are the things we should, and because they have immunity, it's difficult for you to go after them thereafter, okay? So it's only those who don't have immunity that you can really want to talk about how you can get them. And then we live in a society also where some people appear to be uh, bigger than the entire country or the law as it seems. So I think that uh, most of the problems we have in terms of crisis, they are fueled by politicians. Nigerians will not go and carry ballot boxes on their own volition. Mm. They also disrupt the election. People are induced. People are giving gratification against Section 130 of the Electoral Act, you know, where all the offenses are stated as regards electioneering and all that. 
So I think we have gotten to a point where we must kill the mosquito that buys the slave. Because we have no guarantee that if he sees the bottom of the king, he will not do the same. Okay. The politicians, the troublemakers in this society, we must make sure that we enforce the law against them. That is how countries get civilized. But if we all sit down and watch, there is no way this country will, will, will be bailed out from this kind of crisis where in 1999, in 1998-1999, we saw how the election went. It was not a perfect system, but the, the actors and the contestants were not that violent, were not as vociferous, and then as, 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 as uh, very, very fierce as the, pe the kind of politicians we're seeing today that wants to make sure that they appoint who will lead at all the uh, levels, uh, levels. levels. The, you know, in most states, we have issues like that, Ogun State, we have issues like that, outgoing governors that are expected to um, give account of their stewardship. What they do is to employ other person that will succeed them. And that is what must happen, otherwise they will make the state ungovernable. Speaking of outgoing governors, I'm very curious. We seem to have a tradition of people leaving the governorship and going into the Senate or the House of mm. Assembly, and then after a while coming back. What's your take on that? Well, it's because, it's, it's because there's no law against it. Okay, And then if you ask my opinion, I think leaving as a governor to the Senate or House of Representatives is even, is even a backward stride because the position of a governor is far, far bigger. If you have been a governor before, Perhaps you should uh, help others to get into the house. You should become a mentor that will mentor the younger ones to become governors or to go into the National Assembly. And not you retiring into the National Assembly and you want to stay there and stay yourself there. We, in the last uh, dispensation, the 8th Assembly, we had uh, 21 of them. Mm. They are just there. And these are people also who have made themselves life pension in their respective states. And then there in the house, we have, we have debate for, of that, that why do you earn pension and now earn again? As, we have a big crisis in our hands. And you see, the youths, they are the worst affected here because the resources that is meant for the general good of this society is in the hands of just less than 1% of the population. Okay. I would like to ask questions concerning Lagos, for example, to just concluded elections on Saturday. So we had cases in my neighborhood in Surulere where they had to get bells ringing all around the street and begging people to come out and vote. And you had people who told you to your face that some people had threatened them actually that if they were going to come out because they were of a certain tribe, that if they were going to come out and vote, that they would be harmed for doing so, or else they were going to vote in a certain party. Now, is this supposed to be the narrative for the Lagos that we have today? the dream Lagos that we portray to the rest of the world? You see, it, it is sad. It is sad because, you know why I say it's sad? Because this Lagos we're talking about became a crown colony in 1861. Lagos became an extension of England in 1861. Lagos was never a state during the colonial era, even when the state where, they, where we had the Northern and Southern Protectorate. Lagos was a different society. It got that that toga of the center of excellence, pre-independence, not post-independence. Now, these same Lagos have become a society where democracy is supposed to strive. Lagos is supposed to be more far developed than this, mm -hmm. okay? We're, we're sitting at VI now, VI is the most expensive slum in the world, okay? And now, it's a society that have not really come out from, if you look, Lagos should be ahead of, every country of West Africa colonized by the British. Mm. But Lagos is far, far, far below a city like Addis Ababa, for example. You understand? So, I mean, and these are the kind of attitude, the kind of things you see where people play on tribal and uh, ethnic, and then, you know, because the, 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 the general society itself has played us um, a negative narrative when, during independence, everyone was called out of his tribe. And they say, you know what? By virtue of this treaty, we have what they call statehood. Come out from your enclaves. Let's embrace what they call nationhood. 
and that is the right way to go as the world was advancing. Now, when statehood failed, people now reclined to their tribes. And you know that the tribe is a natural enemy of the state. Mm. You understand? So because of the entire country's uh, policy, which democracy did not survive before the military struck, when the military left it over, they still took it over again as civilians in democratic dispensation with a different constitution that have trapped the destiny of this country. So what you have now is just a narrative that is neither here nor there. Do you know that it is established section 14, subsection 2 of the 1999 constitution as amended? It is hereby accordingly declared that sovereignty belongs to the people, to which government derives a legitimacy, that the security and welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government. It is the constitution already defined what this society should be. But that same constitution shot itself at the foot in section 6 of section 6C, which is called the ouster clause, that says that you cannot even take government to court for all the various uh, uh, socioeconomic rights explained and uh, stated in chapter 2 of the constitution. Therefore, you have a constitution that gives us power in one hand to have the wealth and resources and aspiration of this country. And in the same constitution, you have a provision that castrates us. So whereas in most countries of the world that had independence with Nigeria, mm. that chapter two of the constitution is enforceable, but it's not enforceable here. So we must begin to interrogate the, the, the policies of government and the narrative that will guarantee the Nigerians say, Lagos, the case of Lagos, I think those who started the narrative of forcing people to vote for a particular political party because they are for a political, political uh, tribe must be fish out and penalized. All right. Let's still go back to analyzing the 2019 gubernatorial elections. From your perspective, what were the shockers? Apart from the low voter turnout, you know, which states shocked you the most? Which states surprised you? Which states were you happy with? Well, I, 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 I like the turnout of the election in all your states. Uh, we have, in Lagos here, we've always seen them as local people. Mm -hmm in your state, but they gave us the shocker of our lives. They are sophisticated voters. They told the governor plain that this is what we are going to do with our PVC. And they did exactly the same. The incumbent party there lost. I mean, the party who you know, lost in, in that mm. particular state. And now the result for Imo has just been declared. That in states where you have governors that are overbearing, <laughs> Governors that have certain togas of constituted authorities and hyperbasing. <laughs> people, people now want to make sure that you don't, you don't become over, overbearing on the people because sovereignty belongs to the people to which government derive a legitimacy. So your legitimacy as a governor is derived from the, from the people's will and mandate which they have donated allegiance to you. It's because most of our governors don't know but now, I think, apart from the fact that we have low voter turnout, we are also making progress in a way. We're making progress in a way because people's votes now count in a way, not in the entire country, because we know they are rigging here and there, but in places where they have successfully had this election, even places where they ultimately change the figures, okay, at least the, the political, uh, what do you call them, the, 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 the candidates and then their supporters now know that the people have rejected them, even though they have turned the table around. All right. Okay, now, one, one very, sorry, please, one very final question before you leave us, um, Vice Evans. What would be that thing you would want Nigerians to change um, in the oncoming election for the next four years? What are the things you feel we should do better? What are the things you Let's think? take one lesson from, you know. Yes, comments. from this, from you well, just concluded the election. Well, well I, I think that we, we must uh, uh, sign the new uh, electoral amendment act uh, law into into an act you know uh, bill uh, so that you can now have a proper electronic transmission of results is because the manual transmission you see this you see this um, inconclusiveness we're having is as a result of this manual collation you understand if we have electronic transmission we should have the result as quickly as possible almost should have been yeah almost immediately mm. should have been announced so the possibility and tendency to tamper with the result will reduce, and then you will not be having inconclusive 
uh, this in here and Results. there. Then as regards the police and the security, we should change the process. Mm. We must go to civilized jurisdiction to find out how these things are done so that we can adopt systems and processes that we lift our, our process of election, make it more transparent and make it a little bit better than what we have now. We have four years to go, so let's hope that within these four years we're not going to do the fire brigade approach, that the government will take into account all these lessons that have been learned from sure. the just concluded presidential and gubernatorial elections and that they will be effective such that when 2023 comes, we will be adequately prepared you know, and do election like it's done in other parts of the world. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. Thank you so much, Barry. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.